Broadcast Network, After Buzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries, and your number one source for after show entertainment. Johnson. Johnson. TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind the scenes exclusives. All thanks to E Entertainment's Maria Menunos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! Hello, and welcome to a special the ultimate fighter after buzz it's special because we have four of us today yes i am daria baronado and i'm here with alexis torres hey everybody mr george hermosa and mr j tan as always welcome welcome we captain the... captain george hermosa oh i'm oh, so sorry. sorry captain horge and and sir <laughs> sir horge, j tan and madame <laughs> alexis torres is that we right? got the band together finally i'm getting a very evil stare down from george right now yeah, I don't think he realizes oh that the red light is on. I'm not quite sure that the light is on in his head, even, for that matter. I, I think he's mad. Welcome <laughs> to the Ultimate Fighter After Buzz After TV Show. <laughs> I'm George Ramosa. This is Jay Tan across from Dear Bironato and Alexis Torres <laughs> McCleal. <laughs> you are so close. I'm so proud of you right now. McCleal? We McCleal. just discovered McCleal. Daria's yeah. walkout nickname, Snorty. That's not Darius funny. Snorty Could my, no, my teammate already named me. Uh, Wait, that wasn't intentional. Piggy pen or something? Because <laughs> um, I, I snow, I snort when I laugh. Sometimes I get really excited. Snorty. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so everybody, uh, a week, <laughs> what, about 10 days from now, Maverick Stadium in El Dante, California, Daria, will be the first fight on the card, California Fight League, yep. starting at 6 o'clock, and everybody should come out, tickets are very uh, reasonable, starting at 20 bucks, yep. and when she walks out, we are all chanting, snorty, snorty, <laughs> snorty, on. snorty. Gonna, She's going to come she out to party in the USA no, by I'm Miley Cyrus. We, we are debating. You heard it here first. <laughs> We've been debating my walkout song all day. These these guys have such uh, adamant opinions about what I should walk out to. The, more, last more on that side. Last resort by <laughs> Papa you can't Roach give it so away. Boring. Well, good. Last resort by Papa Roach. Now you can't use it. That's that <laughs> yeah. done. That's evil. Good sabotage. Yeah, that's, that's evil. That's pretty messy. All right. Oh, sabotage, Beastie Boys. That's a good one too. Get out of my head. <laughs> anyway, we're gonna be talking about episode to my car. Four today, <laughs> which was an amazing battle between Carla Esparza and Angela Hill. Number one ranked Carla Esparza versus number 16 ranked Angela Hill. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Good episode, right? It was a good episode. I, I still want some more drama. I think you'll see it next week, but we'll get into that later. You know, today. we're we're about a third of know? the way into the season, and yeah, you would start. I feel like we're still this season had, or this episode had a few uh, still laying a few seeds, but yeah. I think we're ready to kick it into the next level. If if that drama is there, um, <laughs> you pretended. I, I missed it. Everybody listening on iTunes also was you missing whatever just happened. Pretended you had a pocket, and <laughs> it, was, oh, it was you were smooth as glass. Yeah, yeah. smooth as glass. A, another hit for uh, YouTube then. Yeah. But uh, at any rate, so you know, we still have the uh, the continued drama. Seemed to be uh, specifically focused on the. Uh, I want to say, yeah, yeah. I want to say the bullying. I want to be fair, almost bullying, but certainly at least two on one. Yeah, uh, yeah. The slant against Heather, kind of Heather against her team. Um, hopefully, it wasn't purely that, but Rose and and more important, more specifically, uh, Angela Magana really, really have it out. For yeah, Heather, yeah. They, Heather Joe Clark. It really seems like they have it out for. I mean, she does come across slightly. Annoying. Bossy, annoying too, sometimes. and annoying. She seems like she tries to take charge of the situation, yeah. but to not 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 a big extreme. She just seems, you know, a little bit over the top compared to these girls. She's very well intentioned. I think yeah, we're, I we're talking about this past couple of weeks. I, I you don't know. think she means harm. No, certainly not. In fact, I think she means a lot of good because the you know the the vibe she's been trying to establish with everybody is this team unity. Right. And granted, at a certain point. It is fighter versus fighter. This is a turn of a, an individual sport. Um, granted, you're all, you're on the same team for for training and stuff like that. But at a certain point, or probably around the semifinals or so, it's going to become teammate versus teammate. And um, yep. I guess Heather's philosophy is to cross that bridge when you get to it, perhaps. Yeah. Whereas yeah. the other women clearly are just not having her. 
I do feel a little bit bad for Heather, though. I mean, it is like you said. She looks mm. like she's been being good intention. It's like, mm -hmm. like you said, she's getting bullied, but for what? Yeah. Like, if you really break it down, what is it so bad that she's doing? She's not trying to sabotage anyone. She's not trying right. to maliciously, maliciously hurt anyone. Right. It's like... I, I think, like Jay said earlier, they're making mountains out of molehills. I mean, there's really nothing going mm -hmm. on, so they're really honing in on this one thing. Mm -hmm. um, she, she just a little over the top. The girls picked on it, and they all clearly got together as a team, and we're like, okay, now we're all going to pick on her, which, in my opinion, like... Was it everybody, do you think? Well, it was Felice. It, it was, was a huge majority. Felice is on the other side, around. though. Felice hates her from a previous mm -hmm. fight, right. so there's that. Right, of course. But then there's also Angela Magana, mm -hmm. Rose. Right. That are on her team. Right. Yeah. They're all on Team Melendez. That's so horrible well, I mean, me. we don't really know what's going on in the house anyway, because apparently she whines a lot. So that could just yeah. be the fact of just being in the house. You know, with a bunch of girls, it happens. Yeah. You know? And it doesn't come across that whiny to me, but granted, yeah, we're talking we about yeah, 10 well. seconds clips yeah. right you know as, as part of a one-hour show exactly. you know if that um, but the drama you know at least this this episode what I found I find it interesting is last episode in this episode two incident two incidents w with Rose and, mm -hmm. and Heather training and Heather getting uh, getting hurt there yeah. I don't know if that's possibly leading to something um, and then you also had the incident with the, with the uh, ice baths yeah. With Heather was already in. She hadn't been, hadn't trained. She'd done the, right. the Airdyne bike mm -hmm. during that whole training uh, session, and then was in the bath already. And the other team was coming in to the same gym to train. Uh, it was Angela wanted to jump in, and and she was pressed for time because the other team was already coming in and right. felt it. See, she seemed to feel like Heather was hogging the ice baths. Yeah, it was Angela, just Angela um, M. Magana, Magana, yeah. yeah. Magana, yeah. Um, it, it was such a simple fix, though. Like, hey, you know, you kind of had all practice use the ice bath. Can I mm -hmm. use it now? Like, that's how it could have been fixed. But, of course, cameras are around. Everything's mm -hmm. hyped up times 10. So I guess it was cooler for her to say, bitch, I want my ice bath. You know <laughs> yeah, what I mean? Exactly. It, it was like stirring the pot, stirring mm -hmm. the ice bath, so to speak. Mm -hmm. There you go. Mm -hmm. That's about the drama we get on this show. Yeah. You know? Right? Yeah. And, again, I think it draws back to that these women realize this is a huge opportunity and responsibility. Mm -hmm. You know, they are becoming, um, they as a collective group, you know, in this respect are the face of women's MMA. Mm -hmm. um, it's all focused on women this, uh, this season. So they've got a responsibility to carry that, you know, at least for quite a while. And you see different, um, a whole span of different personas and philosophies approaching it. Some of them are just head to the grind, you know, nose to the grindstone, knuckle down and train. Some of them are, have a little bit more personality and silliness, like Felice, mm -hmm. for example, um, and everything in between, you know? Um, so there's that. And then on top of that, um, trying to think what my other point was. <laughs> Quite frankly, I've gone off track, but uh, damn it, that's good enough, you know? That, well, I agree. I'm not going to screw around if I've got that opportunity as well. Yeah, yeah. no, definitely. So. I, I, I think of it as a female fighter myself. Maybe Alexis can agree here. Um, going into something like this, you feel like you're laying the grounds for all the other women. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, mm -hmm. Ronda Rousey already did it for the 135 bantamweight division. That's, that's a said, but these girls are doing it and they're new, not only at their weight division, but in the sport as well. They're mm -hmm. only the second weight class of women going into the UFC. Mm -hmm. So it still is so vital yeah. that we come across as really respectable athletes, not, yeah. not, not kids thrown into a house that are drinking and partying and you know their skill is okay and, and, their, and their mentality is lackadaisy. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I want to come across as a strong competitor who really wants this. Taken seriously. And be taken seriously as a woman in this yeah. sport. It's, it's hard to be taken serious as a woman in any professional sport, let alone mixed martial arts. Like Carla said. Like so Carla yeah. said, mm -hmm. absolutely. I agree 100%. Hmm. No, I mean, I was just going to say the same thing. I feel mm -hmm. like it's just extra hype just because there is a bunch of females in a, yeah. in a house. So I think a lot of people are just expecting drama. Right. But in my brain, when I was watching even the first or second episode, I was kind of glad there was no drama, to be honest. That's that's just my own opinion, though. Which is now ironic. Now we're we're underselling the drama. <laughs> yeah, like, geez, yeah, women's MMA. God, that's boring. Yeah. <laughs> Let's pass on that. Bring no, back the heavyweights. The, <laughs> the drama, to be honest, the only drama in the show is in the fights. The yeah. fights are amazing. They're yeah. they're really interesting to watch. 
but the lack of drama is in the mm-hmm. house. I mean, it's still early, though. It's still really it early. It is early. You and like, like Jay said, they're planting the seeds, I think. Yeah. But I want to see it taken to, if there is that, and I, I shouldn't, I should kind of preface myself, I want to see it taken to the next level, at least for the sake of curiosity mm-hmm. about the show. Um, this is about women vying for a title in this very important, uh, respected thing that, that people are going for. Mm-hmm. That said, a reality show is crash uh, crash television, right? Yeah. You want a little bit of that. Yeah. Yeah. So, do you think uh, it had something to do with uh, throughout the weeks of the filming? Dana White tweeting all, on, on a regular basis, man, this season's so crazy. Man, I can't wait till the season starts. It's like, <laughs> Do you think it was overhyped? Maybe, maybe it's yeah. coming, but it's like, I'm still waiting. Like, what exactly were you talking about, He Dana? hyped it up so much. He did, yeah. I'll, I'll be honest with that. Um, but like we said, maybe it's coming later in the season. Right, Could so. be. Yeah, maybe next early. week. Yeah, maybe next week. I mean, how could it not next week? We have Heather Jo Clark fighting Felice Herrig. It's mm-hmm. a rematch. They've already fought each other. Felice Herrig won the first original fight in Bellator uh, a couple years back. And there is personal resentment and obviously the fact that they had already fought between the two of them. So that's definitely going to heat up. I mean, yeah. in the same house, cutting weight, sharing food, sharing possibly a toilet with the girl that you're fighting. And you have that history, so I think that'll be. I mean, in addition to that, from what I've heard, isn't a I guess like I say the cycle. I'm sure they're all getting that at the same time as well. I was waiting for this question. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I was, really was. I, was just I like, don't know what you're talking about. What do you mean? When when a bunch of females live in a house together or in close quarters with one another, their <laughs> menstrual <laughs> cycles tend to link I, up. I did hear you. I knew like, that. All sarcasm coming I, I, out of this man's yeah, mouth right now. But in reality, do you think that plays any part in the? Preparation or the atmosphere of the house. I don't think uh, it's a fair question. I know it is. There's 16 women in I'm one dis- house. No, I, I mean yeah. I'm, I'm not dismissing it. I just it's hard for me to picture all these girls getting booty and catty. I don't know. Not, I, I don't know. It's I, hard I guess for me to picture it. 16 <laughs> well, no, women. I mean, God, I no. guess 16 women getting their period at the same, same week time. would yeah. be hell. hell. Yeah. Um, it's if they all only a six week <laughs> shoot, right? Yeah. yeah. If they all are linked up. Also, getting your period, uh, you know, the week of your fight, oh, I would never want that to happen. Yeah, I plan mine so it doesn't. You plan your Just no, saying. It, it, oh, oh, your it fights. You plan your fights. You make, oh, now I understand what you're saying. Terrible. Oh, this is great. <laughs> I mean, but it's something that really you have to think yeah. about, especially no. if you're a female fighter. Yeah, you, there's absolutely. no ignoring it. It's like everybody poops, except for women. But it's something that you just have to deal with, you know? But apparently they do fart. Let's oh, they do fart. Oh, oh apparently Angela Hill wanted to bring the farting oh, that into was the house. Fantastic. That was an element she was in this my episode. Hero yeah, this yeah. episode, just for that reason. And she makes a valid point. But no, let's let's go back and let's go back to the to the menstrual thing because I am curious <laughs> yeah, how ahead. much that does affect. I mean, we did see, we have seen it in the past with certain fighters um, that didn't make weight. Saying that that was a factor, mm-hmm. and you know, I, I believe that it could be. You absolutely, I, the average woman I think gains like two to three pounds yeah. on their menstrual cycle, yeah. wow. so I that's do. definitely a factor. Uh-huh. Um, it but slows do you, you have down. To, do you have to train differently when you are on that? Yeah, you yeah, just kind of. I mean, I it wouldn't be my hardest day, and I definitely no. wouldn't want to grapple. I'd rather do stand up. Yeah, right. I agree. Uh, I, think the other person, I think the other person would rather stand up, if anything. <laughs> hey, <laughs> I mean. <laughs> Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I definitely think it's a factor. Uh, like I said, I'm being literal when I say I plan it around my fights. Uh, I'm on birth control for the exact reason that it tells you when you get it. Yeah. Oh. So that okay. I that, know that I won't helps. get it the week of my fight. Huh. Mm-hmm. Is that something? I'm, I'm curious if everyone else is the same way. I would imagine a professional I, female yeah, fighter. I, I can't see them just like, being like, the, oh, it'll just show up. Do the other female fighters in your training center have that same mentality as far as taking birth control so they know when it's I never asked them. That's that's a good question to ask. I never talked to them about it. Hmm. But I mean, I, w- I would assume at a high level you would. Not that I'm a, at a high level yet, but I, I do. Mean, the women at my dojo do. Like they, it's yeah. just easier that way. Mm-hmm. If we have tournaments or anything that's coming up, it's just easier because then we're like, oh, we can't do it that week because so and so is not going to yeah. be feeling. But how well. will that happen though? Let's say let's say next month you say they say, Jerry, we want you to be the Ultimate Fighter. Tryouts are this day. I would never oh, say no because my period. Your period yeah. is on yeah. that day. No. No. Never, never in a million years. I would suffer through the pain no. any day. This That's is good. just so Cue I know. Dana White. Do you want to be a freaking fighter? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I would no. I would never. It's just so you know, so that yeah. uh, if you are in the middle of tough tryouts, you okay. I'm gonna get it any day now. Like just so you know, it's better to know than to be in the dark about that. So then you can be well prepared for it instead mm-hmm. of just yeah. Mm. 
Interesting. Surprise! It, it affects a lot, though. It, 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 does, it does affect cardio. It yeah. affects uh, if you have really bad cramping. That's even that's worse. Even, yeah, you uh, can't can, even you can't even stand imagine. up. Yeah. sometimes. You know? yeah. It's like having really bad stomach. I learned so much today, <laughs> guys. If you want any more tips about your period, <laughs> talk to Daria. Daria B twenty eight on Twitter. <laughs> So Angela Hill likes the fart. Yes. Oh, and I God. think that actually was kind of a, a step in the right direction for, uh, it was two steps forward for feminism, one step back for television. <laughs> <Yeah>. For television. <laughs> very very uh, true. You know, and the, man, I kind of, I'm, I'm really happy about that. It was a fair point. Why? You know what? Tell me, Jay, why? Because it's, in this society, we don't accept that women fart. Maybe women do, but <laughs> half the population, us guys, don't. Don't hear it happen, never know about it, and at a certain point, if we're not mentally strong enough to, to fight it, we just go, you know what? I guess women don't fart. Women do don't do fart, women don't poop. It smells like roses. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. That's just what someone's t shirt said, apparently. Oh, oh okay. That's how you know. Yeah. No, I, I've, through my when years. When was the of last time you farted? Oh my God. <laughs> Ooh, was that you <laughs> like five minutes ago? I was like, hmm? oops. What? Oh. They didn't even start the clock yet. I said no more farting. Uh, oh. No more of that talk. <laughs> okay. No more of that. Um, they were talked about it a lot on Tough mm -hmm. Talk, though. Did they? Yeah, they did. And then they brought a cookie monster out with a bunch of cookies for Carla Sparza. Mm -hmm. So let's get to that. Carla Sparza versus Angela Hill. Uh, number one num versus number 16, obviously. Uh, Carla Sparza won first round via rear naked choke. Wow. Yeah. You gotta give it to Angela Hill though for going out there and being tenacious because, with obviously when you get taken down by Carla Sparza, it's not the easiest mm -mm. thing to avoid. Mm -hmm. nope. And she did. I mean, she she was getting back up, and of course Carla Sparza was relentless and kept pursuing the takedown. But she didn't she didn't give up easily. You had a classic striker versus grappler match here. Of course. Yep. Angela mm -hmm. as the Muay Thai undefeated Muay Thai uh, champion, well, champion fighter, and then the the Invicta champion. Uh, Carla going in, I believe, what, nine, nine and two was her record prior, uh, um, prior to Tough. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and top seeded to win the whole thing with a wrestling background scholarship at Menlo College. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, in situations like that, a lot of times it's uh, the onus comes on the striker to keep it away from the ground. Because if it gets to the ground, then the grappler owns it. Mm -hmm. If it's on the feet, however, uh, the striker has a better shot, mm -hmm. but I would say that the grappler has more control, traditionally speaking. Now, every match is different, granted, but traditionally speaking, the grappler probably has more of an advantage on the ground than the striker on the feet in comparison, if that makes sense. I agree. No, you know, yeah. um, because you are you know, aiming for that shot, whereas you, you might not, you, you might miss it, and then you end up on the ground anyway. Right. Um, so this, Angela went in there, uh, the the card stacked against her, as it were. You right. know? And I think she did fare pretty well. She did get taken down a couple of times, mm -hmm. but you know survived and uh, and was able to at least get back onto uh, top position, open guard. Um, and she was working hard from the bottom as well. That first single, yeah. she was taken down first, and um, I believe she was throwing some strikes from uh, those elbows. Yeah, yeah, vicious yeah. elbows. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Those are from fantastic. bottom. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you know she gave it uh, certainly gave it her all. Um, One of the hardest things I, in, in MMA for me is going against a good wrestler. I mean, yeah. if you've ever practiced with a good wrestler, I mean, especially like a NCAA wrestler, mm. it is so hard yeah. to defend. I mean, it's like having a leech on you that won't leave you alone, it won't get off you. Whereas going against a good striker, you kind of just work on your defense more, you work on getting out of the way, and you work on taking taking her down. Mm -hmm. So I definitely think going against a, a really good wrestler like Carlos Barza is probably one of the hardest things in MMA. Mm -hmm. well, Alex, when you uh, when you trained with ground people, and you've got a pretty extensive Muay Thai background. Yeah, it's really hard for me. Like uh, That's why I was kind of rooting for Angela at first, because one, she is the underdog, and two, because I wanted to see how well she would do. But I've noticed that a lot with Team Melendez that he's he doesn't really work with a lot of with a lot of ground I've noticed he mostly mm. it's a lot of stand up so I feel and also team Pettis works kind of everything so I feel like mm -hmm. that's the only reason why he's not doing so well these past few episodes <laughs> is that yeah. that's just my opinion though, from what I'm noticing that every time right. when his fighter gets taken down to the ground it's over so I always I'm, I'm terrible 
at grappling. I try really hard, but I'm, mm -hmm. I'm so much better when we're standing up. Yeah. But well, yeah. they did bring in Uriah Faber, if you remember, they did. at the beginning of the yeah. episode. Because mm -hmm. um, I guess Pettis was unavailable for a little bit. So Uriah right. Faber, one of the best wrestlers, wrestlers in, in general. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that helped a lot as far as, you know, training Carla Sparza. Not that she's not good anyway, because she's fantastic, mm -hmm. but I really think that played a part in the wrestling aspect that they just mentioned. Yeah, no, and I agree, and I felt, it's funny, because I, from how Angela was talking, I thought she was going to take it, to be honest. That's yeah. how I saw it, because she was talking, you know, that she was like, oh, I've gotten so many knockouts, you oh. know, and all this <laughs> kind of stuff, and I was like, all right. She had a reach this advantage is, as she well. She did. She had a huge reach advantage. I couldn't even remember the numbers, but it was it was large, and I, I don't know, I thought for sure that it was going to be more of a vicious fight, but it kind of wasn't. Yeah, I was expecting it to go a little bit longer. I, uh, I didn't. No. Anytime really? I see, I, I think we talked about this on the UFC show, anytime I see a super experienced striker against a super experienced wrestler, I know who's going to win. Mm -hmm. The wrestler yeah. always wins. I hate to say it like that. I mean, of course it's not a blanket statement. Of course, it's not always, but 90% of the time, in my opinion, the wrestler wins. That's true. I mean, it kind of reminded me of GSP in some way that you just knew that she was just going to go straight for the takedown, just yeah. grinder, grinder. Why would she do anything else? Exactly. It would be stupid of her to stand. Exactly. So yeah. just, I mean, yeah. I, I do credit Angela Hill because I do love the people that are consistently striking, even, even when you can tell that they have, you know, the other person's got their back. Right. She's still trying to get those elbows in mm -hmm. the thing. So even from literally a second before she tapped out, she was still trying to Mm -hmm. Yeah, but as soon in, as you know? someone pulls yeah. you back and stretches you yeah, out, exactly. that's, that's done it's deal. Over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, kudos to Angela Hill, but... She's still a UFC fighter. She's so no, new yeah. to yeah. MMA. So I think she has so much time to work on. Like she's She can literally, seat, right? at this hmm? point... She's the last seed, yeah, right? 16th seed. 16? Yeah. She was 16th, and I'm just taking a look here. I'm curious, who do we put her up against on the finale? Um, I, and I guess it depends on we've got four more quarterfinal matches to see who else gets knocked out in the first right. round um, but you know maybe let's see of of the ones who have fought and lost so far we're talking about Emily Kagan yeah. uh, Lisa Ellis mm -hmm. and Tisha Torres Tisha was ranked number three um, Emily Kagan and Lisa Ellis both Tisha are Torres super and, experienced. and yeah. Angela Hill would be sick. That would be a great fight. Yeah. I mean, that's that's retardedly good <laughs> kickboxing versus retardedly good, good Muay Thai. Right, yeah, uh, that would be okay. a there ridiculous matchup. Oh, well, I don't know if I don't know if you guys got to see it, but there was a preview at the very end of this past episode that mm -hmm. someone gets injured and then they bring somebody back because really? their their injury was so bad that they have to completely drop out. I missed yeah. that part. I did yeah. watch the, the end showed, clip, but I don't remember. They bring somebody that. back. But who left? No, no one ever no, left. No, 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 I'm sorry, not left. Whoever uh, who was uh, who lost. Whoever was defeated gets to come back and try really? again. Already? Oh, yeah. yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah, so that's well, what's going to end up happening. Yeah, I don't. They obviously they're not going to say until you obviously watch the episode. But I feel so that was a preview think for next I week. Know. Yeah, Tisha Tor. Yeah, no, that know. happens next episode. That's what they said. Well, the, if you watch the, it was that tough talk interview. Oh, uh, was it tough they talk? They did the, okay. they did the preview for it, right, and they said right. somebody's, you know, knee injury gets too much, and we have to well, bring somebody back. And I don't know if they're gonna have a fight for that, but they're yeah. supposed to bring someone back because that person has to leave. That's a good idea. Though. They should have a fight instead of just kind of bringing somebody. I don't that know. Lost. I don't know. Um, hmm. But I'm uh, saying that like, usually they'll put somebody that lost that looked good back into the tournament, they should have somebody, two of the losers or something. Yeah, to fight Not just for give it. somebody that lost. Probably give the, Tisha. Give the They're going to bring Tisha Probably back. Give somebody Tisha. the opportunity to win mm -hmm. and yeah. not just put him back in. I mean, that's a good idea. Yeah. But that's like the biggest, that's the biggest deal. Besides, obviously, the fight at mm -hmm. the very end is that they're bringing hmm. somebody back. And I don't know. And that happens next episode. Next episode is what There's, they said. It's interesting. There's a couple knee injuries on the show right now. Including yeah. so, Heather Joe Clark? Yeah. We could She's speculate. Got a but hyper, I hyper extended was, knee. Uh, yeah, it looked like it. But I thought it was more, what was her name? Justine Kish. Yeah, Kish? she's, um, I think, uh, that's my prediction, is that I think she's going to, her ACL is going to either be torn or something like that, and she can't fight. I yeah, think well, it's no, probably no, Justine. But the, the, the biggest thing was her uh, not being at weight. Yeah, she's trying she's really hard. She's, what, at 126? Right. At, trying that to fight at 150? But, yeah. this, but the fact that they kept bringing it up over and over again, and who knows, she's not even fighting next week for sure. She's not. They already announced it, so yeah. I just thought it kind of weird timing. It, yeah, they, they just bring it up, up during training that that she uh, she ended up doing something. That's why I'm thinking it's her. Yeah, so are considering... you saying it may be like a cop out, like okay. like an easy way for her to get off because of her not being able to make weight, or do you think? Hmm. Mm, I no. don't think about that. Maybe, well, maybe the uh, who knows. I, 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 I just thought it was they interesting. Were, they the fact that a... everything's filmed in advance, so it's kind of the producers putting it together. Obviously, already know what's going to happen. Yeah. So I just thought it was interesting timing as far as they're not just going to put it there for no reason. They're not going right. to forget about it. They're going to bring the it up again in two, three, four weeks whenever mm -hmm. she fights. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I thought it was yeah. Maybe yeah. she's planting the seeds. 
I don't know. I just don't know if they're completely kicking her off or if they're just like giving her a break and then having somebody come back. It's it was very it was a weird Maybe. preview. I just know if it's a, a serious injury, she'll be off for good. But I'm yeah, assuming I just it's not it's, a very long show. Could be Heather Joe. Could be Heather Joe. Could be, Heather Heather Joe? Joe yeah. could be Justine. She was complaining yeah. about her, yeah, her right. knee as well. I just mm. know it's, it was that extensive that the doctor's like, you cannot fight. Wow. Hmm. So we're gonna have someone rocked off Don't next week. <laughs> tune in to see guys. Or yeah. tune in to hear us talk about it. Yes. What do you guys think has been the best fight so far and why? Of this season? Yeah. Um, oh, I feel it's so early. No, I, I easily Probably go with the first fight. Tisha, Tisha and Tori. Yeah. 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 yeah me it too. was an upset that went the distance. Right. You know, exciting. Uh, I think 1-1 one, one going into it. Mm -hmm. And and you saw somebody that, yeah, that, that, you saw somebody overperform. Right. Uh, yeah. Perform above their expectations. And that that was kind of a, a, a big thing in the early seasons when when you didn't know these people nearly as well as as now when it's much easier to look up mm -hmm. uh, who they are in, in the background you know when you see them go in and the, these matches in this whole contract the the prize meant so much more to these guys because there mm -hmm. wasn't a track record of the show of people that lost in the tournament going on to being uh, stars or, or fighters in the UFC anyway mm -hmm. so it was a bigger thing to them. Like if you got knocked off, oh crap, that's your, yeah. that could be your uh, your your career done in terms of the big league show, and you yep. never get another shot again. Now it's it's different. Um, so uh, the point being that the early matches uh, of, of early seasons, you, you saw those these guys really wanted it. And yeah, they threw yeah. down. It's so true though, and it really takes kind of a factor out of the show mm -hmm. it's like okay i'm not going home i'm not leaving this house i'm not losing out on training i'm not losing out on a ufc contract i already have all that yeah. guaranteed to me so it they kind of have to reevaluate what they're fighting for like um lisa ellis was struggling missing her child mm -hmm. you know she has a one-year-old back home and her coach was like yeah i get how hard that could be you know but what are you here for why do you want this who yeah. are you doing this for and she had to reevaluate herself and really mm -hmm. dig deep and find something that wanted it more than just you know whatever it may be mm -hmm. but that might be harder to find with these stakes being so different mm -hmm. what do you think I, I'm I'm thinking that six weeks is not a long time. I mean, you know, right, yeah. shortly after this, I'll, I'll try and tie this back to bacon relevantly. But you know, when I was in college, I lived overseas, uh, and in, in a country where I didn't speak the language prior to that, I went over right. there and just threw myself into it, and I was scared to no end. Mm -hmm. uh, it was three months, and it seemed like a long time. So that's kind of what best I can uh, relate to these uh, right. these people in the house. Um, but in retrospect, you look back and go, that wasn't that big of a deal. You know, that was a long time ago. And well, it, you know, I, six weeks is not a long time. Suck it up, and you're getting this huge opportunity. There's a yeah. big for difference it. between, in my opinion, there's a big difference between missing mommy and daddy and missing your kid. I think it'd be I a lot. So. What? No. I mean, especially if you've had the kid, then you're you've gotten to that point in life. Uh, well, when this one's this one's a little different because this one's like it's only a year old. So oh, that's I don't kind agree. Of, that's kind of new. So I mean, in my brain, that feels like that's a big yeah, deal. Yeah, but you agreed to go on the show, so you got to. I'm not. Up. I'm not saying it as a plea out or, or, or a cop out or any sort of excuse. I'm just saying, and and I'm not even saying that. What I'm saying is. Do these girls have less of a motivation to go on in there and perform knowing they already have a UFC contract? Mm. Mm. I, no, I, I don't think they have less of a motivation. They, they shouldn't. And well, they shouldn't. That's not what right. I'm asking, though. Do they? We'd have to ask them one by we one. We haven't but gone I, in there. I don't believe that they, generally speaking, if you polled them, right. I think that they would say, yeah, I'm absolutely motivated. Mm -hmm. Because that thing can go just as much. They're going to have yeah. Yeah, one true. match, you know, and they can legally be cut after one match. Right, of course. You know? Um... So we'll, we'll see, you know. But uh, it's, I think that I think there's enough uh, motivation there, and I, I don't. None of them are knuckleheads to the point that they, you know, don't take this opportunity seriously. I wasn't calling them knuckleheads. I was yeah, just me, saying. Me neither, that, but that's the naturally point. in life. Okay, we all live for something. We all work for something. We all drive for something. It seems to be the people that have like, if you're starving and you have nothing to live on, you have two kids to take care of. Whereas I'm pretty well off, I don't have kids, and I'm living life. You know what I mean? Yeah. Who has more of a motive? Who's going to try harder to make that dollar? It's harder to get up when you're sleeping in silk sheets, right? Exactly. Yeah. That was my point. So uh, we'll see. I want to see some knockouts is my point. I want to see yeah, some submission victories. <laughs> yeah. The Rear Naked Choke was good, but I want to see some knockouts. Maybe next week, Felice Herring and Heather Joe Clark. I'm so excited for that fight. What are your <laughs> predictions? 
I predicted I, something is going to go sideways with yeah. the match. But I do think if, if the fight God, happens, I, I do think that Meaning Felix wins. I don't think the match is going to happen. I think <gasps> something's going to no, happen. No, don't say that. Really? I don't know that. <laughs> but, you know, blank slate guessing. Yeah. Um, like in that knee injury, maybe? Or possibly, just I mean, in general? Yeah. We've been laying the seeds. With with Heather, um, I mean, she's I, been a focus on every single week. Yeah, yeah. There's been yeah. some week. Last week they didn't even show Joanne Calderwood. This week she got That's a little right. bit. Or, or our favor took a liking her. Um, oh, that I. was so cute. Yeah. You have a little competition <laughs> there, yeah, Jorge. There. I, can, I think I can take him. What is he like? Five three. I think you could probably like, take him to lunch or dinner. Yeah. Or <laughs> Maybe a coffee, but I don't think you could. Beyond that, I doubt I, I do it. Need, I do need one of these things that he has. <laughs> oh, my God. I don't it's think that's going to help you. It's a bunch. A That's what it is. That's yeah. what he has. That's yeah. what it is. My boyfriend has one. It's like right in the middle. Like a little bit, little tiny butt chin. Yeah, but you're right. It did seem to take to to JoJo there, right? How could Just you not? I mean, we all accent. say it. Yeah. She's so subtle and soft. And then he actually said that he thought she was one of the best prospects in the house, mm -hmm. one of yeah, the best contenders in the house. That is so awesome. I mean, she's this little sweet girl. Can you do the accent, George? No. <laughs> <laughs> no every other all. episode. <laughs> um, I'll never ask again. Yeah, maybe maybe I'll, I'll pick JoJo to go all the way. Ooh. That might be uh, so. Maybe yeah. JoJo and Carla in the finals. She was one of them. JoJo. That was one would of them. be a sick final. That would be great. Mm. Yeah. What would right. the next I fight? For the winner, of, if it happens, Felice and Heather ends up fighting. Uh, uh, Randa, is that her name? Felice and he yeah, she, uh, the winner of Felice and Heather. If if that match happens, will be uh, Randa Marcos. Either way, I do see Felice just kind of going, ad advancing to the next round. Hmm. As much as I really don't like, I would be scared. Heather's attitude. I really want her to win. Yeah. Yeah, just to just to say like, hey, shut up. Like, really? well, okay. you know everybody in her group just hates her. I feel like if she won. Nobody would ever complain about it. It just depends how she that. won. Like, if she would have well, come no. out freaking 10 seconds in, she just knocks her yeah, out. That's it's what like, I mean. now what? I feel yeah. like they'll hate on her more. Really? Yeah. I feel I like that'll agree with that. Possibly. I feel like that'll yeah. just See that. turn their knobs even no, tighter about I her. Think so. no, I think it'll shut I don't think it'll up. shut them up. They're all fighters, guys. Yeah, that's true. I don't know. I just uh, think it'd be funny. It would be funny, though. Yeah. It w would be cool to see. I would just be like, I'm done with the show. I think my prediction is Felice is going to win. But mm -hmm. I'm scared, very, very scared to see Felice go up against Randa. I. That would be a good one. I think it'd be a good fight. It would. I think it'd be a good fight. I, I but I give it to that Randa. To be a grinder. Yeah. Yeah. Felice uh, has. Uh, Felice has, has fought for quite a while. She's got a ex pretty extensive uh, Muay Thai record. Yeah. Um, where is my note here? Yeah, nine and five. Uh, Randa is four and one. So Felice has a very extensive experience differential there, right. you know, across what, the board. Well, do you know what Tisha Torres's record was or is? Yeah, Tisha is. Uh, she went in at four and zero, oh, and if we yeah. count this match, you know, it'd be four and one. Okay. Officially, these matches are not. Uh, yeah, that's my go next question. I was gonna say, I was like, that doesn't go on the record. Right? No, it doesn't. Part of the show. Even okay. though this went three rounds, it doesn't go on the record. Oh, right. Nope. It's considered an exhibition. Yeah, I was curious about that. Yeah. You know what's funny is sometimes I look at it and it's like it's almost as if Team Pettis is like the cool team. <laughs> yeah, it's right. Like that's that's how people. I look at it. They yeah. got the number one strange. seed. I think the number two seed. The number four. No, no, not the number four. The number. Yeah, the number four seed. And yeah. you have Melinda yeah. just kind of. Like the, uh, I remember. I, I remember just kind of thinking about elementary school. They had that cool crowd that, of course, yeah. I was in. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then yeah, it's just one of you got your Carla. You know, Felice is kind of such a badass. She's kind of like the the cool girl, the cool hip girl that everybody wants to be around. She's yeah. got the headband always. You know, she's always coming up with the panties on the on the team <laughs> pet pet sign. You know, right. I don't know why. And I think Melendez. It's kind of like they have their internal struggles. They're always fighting with each other. Yeah. It just kind of just seems I just, so boring. I just wanted to get one win. Yeah. Like at least in the next like two episodes, it would make me feel so much better. I don't think there's been a show where it's such one a team's landslide. Been thrown out. Yeah. I know. There have been landslides, but usually a team will win one or two. Yeah. And uh, then those two, one of them at least, will go to the finals. Yeah. Chuck Liddell, Randy Couture. That was, that I was, think that was one, yeah, Like yeah. a landslide. Yeah. It I was, think Matt, Sarah, Matt Hughes, it was like one-sided as well. But even, a, even if Felice won next week, that's another team Pettis, so it's yeah, going to be 5-0. Yeah, that's why, yeah. I, I don't know. But that wow. said, I'm going to debate you, and Team Melendez has Beck Rawlings, the most yes. inked up and probably the check on the show. They've got your girl, Rose Namajunas. I think, yeah. Okay. Nice. She's going to be, I think, the star of Team Melendez. Yeah. They're stacked. The, the stacked ones just haven't fought yet. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. They're they're yeah. saving a few for uh, for later well, on. Well, I mean, it makes sense. And and you got uh, the farter Angela Hill. That's pretty cool. 
She's okay with me, as far no, as I'm concerned. I agree. So, you know, there, there's a bit of a cool crowd there as well. Um, <laughs> well, Team Pettis is picking the fights, so obviously. Yeah. They're having a better time, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Um, what about the Team Penis thing? George, did you I didn't catch. Something? I didn't even catch that, but uh, Jake was the one that caught it. Oh, what? Jay, you were the one that caught it. <laughs> I didn't even. It was it in the head. Team Pettis locker room, the same locker room that has the, uh, the panty ball wall. of panties. Yeah. Right. yeah. Um, somebody had taken the two T's in the sign for uh, Team Pettis, right in the middle there on the wall, right, and created a, a diagonal to link oh, the God. two T's. So it looks like a capital N there, which reads Team Penis. Wow. And yeah, I would. I think what's really curious is whether this uh, uh, we, we see this play out later in the in another episode as another antic, right. which will be interesting because then that really establishes how much you're editing and taking something from later and putting it in uh, earlier. Mm -hmm. You know, because I think the shot was of uh, um, Justine Kish stretching out. You know, and it, the sign just happened to be in the background. There. Right. It was like a little. I have to yeah. foreshadowing. Now, I minutes, totally didn't see that. Yeah, 15 minutes later when they were warming up, it was back to Team Pettis. So that huh. was either a rib that Team Melendez did on Team Pettis. Probably. Or, what are we, just like, as equally likely, <laughs> perhaps something that Felice or one of the team did Probably. on their own time, you know, to be uh, to be silly and right. created that, you know. So, it um, sounds like something Felice Harris yeah, would do. Yeah, I can totally <laughs> see it, though? her yeah. doing it does. that. Um, so, yeah, there, there was that as well. Uh, we'll see if that, that plays out as, as one of those ribs that, you know, mm -hmm. gets the two teams feuding even more so, you know. That's been done before. Speaking of Uriah Faber, I remember his uh, when he was coaching mm -hmm. the opposite team, Dominic Cruz. They put like a oh, they like a those string two photos. on his big on his big like a picture of his face. They put like right. a string because you know his oh. chin looked like a butt, so it looked like yeah. it was a song so they made right it there. Look like no, a song. Oh, yeah. that's fantastic. And then, yeah, it went back and forth, and it continued to escalate. I remember they made Dominic Cruz look like Eddie Munster. I think. Oh, are, are we wrapping up here? We're getting the music, I guess. All right, All right. go so, ahead, Jay. Give your shout outs. The shout outs. Um, I'm in your uh, social media Instagram, Twitter, Facebook at uh, JTan716. And happy birthday to my favorite girl, Ellie Mack. Your turn, Alexis. Oh, my turn? Oh, you can find me at Instagram and Twitter on ATorres890. Uh, do I get a shout out? Mm -hmm. of course. Oh, I shout out to my best friend, Sarah Paris. She just got a new job and she got out of a really terrible job that she's been in for like years. So Whoa. go, Sarah. Yeah. Oh, my turn. My, my, you can find me at Twitter and Instagram at ghermoza, at G H E R M O Z A. Boom. Guys, we will be back next week talking about The Ultimate Fighter, Episode 5. It's going to be an awesome one. Heather Joe Clark, Felice Herrig rematch. I'm Daria Baranati. You can find me at DariaB28. Come to Maverick Stadium next Saturday to watch me fight. See you guys later. From executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later! The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.